Let's go ahead and start with a brief word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time that we can spend together again today. And as we pause, Lord, for the next hour, give us the mental focus. Remove all distractions. And may our minds be open to the speaking of your Holy Spirit to our hearts. We thank you, Father, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, as we begin again today, I want to start with a familiar quote that we've read a number of times. Kind of set the stage for our continued study. Southern Review, January 1 of 1901. We are told, He only who loves his fellow man to a purpose can know God. How many of you want to know God? We all want the experience of knowing God. And she tells us that only those who have the love of Christ can, can know God. And then she goes on. This is the reason that there is so little genuine vitality in our churches. Little love in our churches, little uh, life in our churches. Then she goes on and she says, the Theology is valueless unless it is saturated with the love of Christ. We want the world to see the value of our theology. And in order for that to happen, our theology needs to be infused with the love of God. She goes on in Nine Manuscript Releases, page 128. A loving, lovable Christian is, is the most powerful argument in favor of the truth. Not, not arguing and debating, but having love in our hearts is the powerful argument in favor of the truth. We looked at this definition of agape love. A selfless love that delights in others. Agape love does not think of itself first. But it looks for the best in other people. It puts others and their happiness first. It delights in seeing other people happy. This is the kind of love that Jesus has. And it's the kind of love that he wants his children to have as well. And Jesus told us in John 13, that it's when we have this type of love, that we give evidence to the world that we are disciples of Christ. Not our, not our theology, not what we believe to be truth, but the love that we have towards one another. 
Now, as we continue our study this morning, we'll remember that First Corinthians 13 is divided into three sections. Ah, we know that First Corinthians 13 is divided into three sections. We've already looked at the supremacy of love yesterday. We've already looked at the supremacy of love yesterday. We've already looked at the supremacy of love yesterday. We've already looked at the supremacy of love yesterday. We've already looked at the supremacy of love yesterday. We've already looked at the supremacy of love yesterday. We've already looked at the supremacy of love yesterday. We've already looked at the supremacy of love yesterday. We've already looked at the supremacy of love yesterday. And he illustrates as important as the gifts of the Spirit are. He says, "The Spirit's gifts are so important that they are nothing unless they are uh, 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 unless they are saturated with the love of Jesus." But if there is no love, it is of no use. And those who have those gifts without love, but those who have the gifts of the Spirit without love, ultimately they are nothing. Ultimately, they are nothing. Then in our next presentation, we began to look at the second section of First Corinthians 13. 然后昨天接下来工作坊，我们看到呃第二个阶段的呃哥林多前书十三章。Where Paul begins to describe to us the characteristics of love. 保罗开始告诉我们博爱到底是什么。He takes agape and he puts it under a microscope. 他把博爱放在显微镜下观看。And he describes in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. He starts to describe in detail what he sees in that microscope. And boil it down into those few verses. He put four gospels into four verses. And as we looked at that, when we read these verses, we found that this would not just be a description of Jesus's character. We found that this would not just be a description of Jesus's character. We found that this would not just be a description of Jesus's character. We found that this would not just be a description of Jesus's character. We found that this would not just be a description of Jesus's character. Tomorrow we will look at the permanence of agape. 明天我们会看到呃博爱的固定性。That although other things pass away, agape love will last forever. 当所有的事都呃逝去的时候，博爱会永久。Today we're going to continue looking at the characteristics. 今天我们会继续看呃这爱的特征。So turn with me in your Bibles to First Corinthians thirteen. 请打开哥林多前书十三章。And we're going to read verses four through seven again. 我们会再次阅读第四到第七节。Bible says this. 圣经说。Charity suffereth long and is kind. 爱是恒久忍耐又有恩慈。Charity envieth not. 爱是不嫉妒。Charity vaunteth not itself. 爱是不自夸。Is not puffed up. 不张狂。Doth not behave itself unseemly. 不做害羞的事。Seeketh not her own. 不求自己的益处。Is not easily provoked. 不轻易发怒。Thinketh no evil. 不计算人的恶。Rejoiceth not in iniquity. 不喜欢不义。But rejoiceth in the truth. 只喜欢真理。Beareth all things. Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. And endureth all things. Today we will begin our study. By looking at Paul's description. That charity doth not behave itself unseemly. Simply put, it means that charity is not rude. Charity is not what? Charity is not rude. 爱是不粗鲁的。Agape is never rude. 啊，博爱是从不是无礼的。Or ill-mannered. 或者是啊，没有礼貌的。It is not offensive or impolite. 它不冒犯人，也不不会不尊重他人。Although we live in a society today, 虽然我们呃，现今活在一个这样的社会 ，where this kind of thing is accepted as normal， 就是有这样的社会风气 ，being rude to people， 啊，对别人粗鲁或粗暴 ，being offensive and impolite， 无礼。
For those that have the character of Jesus, this will not be part of their lives. They will treat each other in a loving manner, not in a rude manner. But as with the things we looked at yesterday, I believe that if we take a close look at what's going on in our homes and in our churches, we will find that this type of act, uh, uh, this type of characteristic has crept into the church. It has been accepted that it's okay to treat each other in this manner. For some, it's just something that they overlook, expecting that that would take place. But if God's church is filled with agape love, we will not be treating each other in this manner. So I ask you a question. How do you treat your parents? When they do and ask you to do things that you don't want to do. Parents, how do you treat your children? When they do and say things that you disapprove of. There is never an excuse to treat somebody in a rude and ill-mannered and impolite way. No matter how they treat you. How do you treat somebody in church? Who publicly embarrasses you in front of other people? How do you treat somebody in church? Who says something that is theologically inaccurate in Sabbath school? Listen to this statement from Gospel Workers. Page 391. Jesus never suppressed one word of truth. But he uttered it always in love. How did Jesus share the truth? He did it in love. He exercised the greatest tact and thoughtful, kind attention in his intercourse with other people. He was never rude. Never needlessly spoke a severe word. Never gave needless pain to a sensitive soul. He, he did not censor human weakness. He was never what? He was never rude. He was kind to other people. Listen to this. He fearlessly denounced hypocrisy, unbelief, and iniquity. But tears were in his voice as he uttered his scathing rebukes. Did Jesus correct error? We've, we've read in the Bible where he rebuked the religious leaders. Calling them whited sepulchers. And denouncing their hypocrisy. But as he did it, we're told that he had tears in his eyes. Let me suggest to you something. If you are not willing to lay down your life for a brother or a sister, 
Then it would, it would probably be wise for you to be careful how you correct them. Many time our corrections is because we want other people to know that I am right and they are wrong. Is that the spirit of agape? Jesus did not correct people's wrongs because he wanted them to know that he was right and they were wrong. When Jesus corrected other people, he did it because he knew that if they did not change their way, they would lose out on the kingdom of heaven. His correction was motivated by love. A love that desired to see these people in the kingdom of heaven. The statement in 1 Corinthians 13 that agape is not rude. It, it proves that this love is controlled by a divine power. Because naturally speaking, we are rude to one another. Can God help us to get over this? Agape is not rude. Let's look at the next characteristic. The Bible, the Bible goes on and it says that charity or agape seeketh not her own. Another translation says, it does not insist on its own way. Of all the 15 or so characteristics of agape that Paul gives to us, this is perhaps the hardest for the unsanctified heart to understand. That agape does not insist on its own way. For the normal, unsanctified heart, self is number one and everybody else comes after that. But for, for charity or for agape, it's the other way of thinking. Self is last and others are first. Listen to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. The Bible says this, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Is it? Verse 3? Verse 3, yep. But in lowliness of mind. Um, sorry. That's okay. Sorry. Philippians? Yeah, two, Philippians 2 3. 2, 3. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem the other better than himself. So the Bible here tells us that we need to have a mind that is humble. In lowliness of mind. To esteem each other better than ourselves. Now Paul goes on here. And he says something very interesting beginning in verse 5. He says, let this mind be in you. 
which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God. That's okay. Is it the wrong verse? Yes. Okay. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But listen to this in verse 7. But made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of man. Do you have to be humble to take no reputation, yes or no? Do you have to be humble to take the position of a servant? Yes or no? Do you have to be humble to go from being God to being made into the image of man? And Paul says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And then he describes the mind of Christ for us. Going on and being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. And became, and became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. This is the mind that Paul tells us that we ought to have. When I look at Philippians chapter 2, and I see Paul telling me to have the mind of Christ, I realize that this is impossible without the help of God. What Paul has just described is the direct opposite of the natural mind. The natural mind wants to take the most comfortable route. The natural mind wants to have an elevated position. The natural mind wants to be applauded by other people. The natural mind wants positions of authority. And wants to be thought well of the other people. But Paul tells us that that's not the mind of Christ. And we are reminded in John, in 1 John 3 and verse 2, that when, that when Christ comes back, First John three two. That when Christ comes back, that we will be like Him. In other words, the mind of Christ will be the mind of His people. Listen to this statement from Christ's Object Lessons. Page, 60, page 69. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he shall come to take them or claim them as his own. It's when the character of Jesus has become the character of his people. That Jesus will come back to claim us as his own. According to this statement in the Bible, Jesus is not waiting for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. 
音乐。Jesus is waiting for his children to have the character that he has. 他所等待的是等待他的子民有了他的圣德。Listen to me carefully. 仔细的听我说。The fulfillment of Bible prophecy does not prepare you to be in the kingdom of heaven. 呃，预言的应验不是来预备我们，呃。It is having the character of Christ that prepares you to be in the kingdom of heaven. 而是当我们拥有了基督的圣德的时候，预备我们进入天国。And my Bible tells me that God is not willing that any should perish. 我圣经告诉我，他不愿任何人沉沦。But that all should come to repentance. 而愿人人都悔改。God is waiting for His children. 耶稣在等待他的子民。To let the Holy Spirit have complete power in their lives. 他的。耶稣在等待圣灵完全的，呃，影响他儿女的生命。I want the character of Jesus. How about you? 我想要耶稣的品格，你呢 ？Going on, Paul continues with his description here. 啊，保罗继续说道。And he says that agape thinketh no evil. 然后保罗继续说到，爱不计算人的恶。Agape thinketh what? How much evil? How much is no evil? English is to say completely. Just one. Not to count human evil. Two. Is one evil? How much? One evil is or two evil? Is how much? No evil. Is completely not to count human evil. Do you need some help in that area? 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 There is no toleration, is what Paul is telling us here. Paul says, "In this place, is no toleration." You see, the the mind of Jesus, Jesus' mind, was constantly on heavenly things. Is always, uh, have heavenly things. Yes, he was. Yes, he was tempted. Is he? He has been tempted. And yes, he lived in a sinful world. He is in a sinful world. But he did not choose to think evil thoughts. 可是他没有选择去思想罪恶的事。Agape thinketh no evil. 爱不计算人的恶。Proverbs chapter twenty-three and verse seven, the Bible says. 呃，箴言三章五节，二十三章七节。Paul, uh, Solomon says. For as he thinketh in his heart or in his mind, so is he. Because he thinks how he thinks, he is how he is. It is a natural thing. It is a very natural thing. That what you think about is what you become. So if we think evil thoughts. We become those evil thoughts. If we think heavenly thoughts, if we think on the character of Christ, it is a natural thing that we will become what we are thinking about. We will naturally become Jesus' character. Listen to Proverbs 4 and verse 23. 箴言四章二十三节，这里说到 ，He Solomon gives us a piece of advice here. 呃，扫罗，哎，扫罗，扫罗门王在这里给了我们一个劝勉。He says, "Keep thy heart with all diligence." 你要保守你心，胜过保守一切。Now he's talking about the mind here. 这里说到的是，呃，我们的思想，我们的心。For out of it. Are the issues of life? Because one's good fruit is from the heart. So Solomon is telling us to guard our thoughts. Solomon, King, here is telling us to guard our thoughts. Because out of it are the issues of life. Because one's good fruit is from the heart. Now I like the way the、uh, New Living Translation puts this. Oh, I like the way the New Living Translation. Yeah, just another translation. 就是圣经的另外一个译本。For it determines the course of your life. 因为它决定了你人生的去向。What you think about. 
你所想的 determines the course of your life. 就是决定你人生的去向。And so Solomon says, be careful what you think about. 所以保罗说：“你要小心你所想的东西。” Listen to the statement from Testimonies for the Church, Volume Five, Page Three Ten. 教会真言卷五，三百一十页。这里说到 ：“If the thoughts are wrong， 如果人的思想错误 ，the feelings will be wrong。情感也就必错误。And the thoughts and feelings combined make up the moral character。而思想与情感的结合，使造成了。” I'm sure you've read that statement before. What, what makes up our character? Our thoughts and feelings. And it's our thoughts that govern how we feel. So if we want to have good feelings, Feelings. We need to be careful what we think about. We need to be careful what we think about. We need to be careful what we think about. We need to be careful what we think about. We need to be careful what we think about. We need to be careful what we think about. We need to be careful what we think about. We need to be careful what we think about. That's why Paul says that charity thinketh no evil. So Paul says, "Love is not a reckoner of evil." Because it has a character that is like Jesus. Because it has a character that is like Jesus. Because it has a character that is like Jesus. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. And we need to ask the Lord. We need to ask the Lord. To do surgery on our hearts. 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 Ezekiel tells us that God wants to give us a new heart. Ezekiel says, "God wants to give us a new heart." And he wants to take out the stony heart. He wants to take out the stony heart. He wants to take out the stony heart. The selfish heart. The selfish heart. The evil thinking heart. The evil thinking heart. The rude heart. The rude heart. He he wants he wants to take it out. 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 He wants I want to have my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart taken out. I want my spiritual chest opened up and have that stony heart We reap our actions. 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 We reap our actions Our destiny. We reap our destiny. Charity thinketh no evil. 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 Charity In verse five, the Bible tells us why God had to destroy the earth. Uh, 创世纪六章五节，这里说到耶稣为什么，呃，上帝为什么要毁掉这世界 ？And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. 耶和华见人在地上罪恶很大 ，and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. Continually. Why did God have to destroy the earth? 
为什么上帝要毁掉这世界呢 ？The thoughts of man were what? 因为人的思想，都是恶。Evil continually. 是持续的恶。It was a constant flow of evil thoughts in his mind. 是人不断的思想恶的事情。And as a result of man thinking evil thoughts. 当人不断思考恶事的时候 ，The Bible says in verse eleven. 圣经在第十一节说 ，That the earth was corrupt before God. 世界在上帝面前败坏 ，And it was filled with violence. 地上满了强暴。When we choose to think evil thoughts, 当我们选择去思考恶的事 ，We are contributing to an earth that is corrupt before God. 我们也，呃，在。我们将会使这世界变得败坏。And we are bringing violence into our churches and into our homes. 我们把强暴带到我们的家庭里和我们教会。Thoughts that starts right here in your thoughts. 全部都始于我们的思想。We need to pray and say, Lord, take captive my thoughts. 我们需要祷告，并告诉上帝帮助我们掌管这思想。They are subject to you and your will. 但但愿这思想能够，呃。交托到你的手上。Help me to think thoughts that are only pure and that will lift me up to you. 帮助我能够思考纯洁的心，使我能够更接近你。Sometimes what I do. 呃，有时候我会这么做。When I am tempted with an evil thought. 当我有一个邪恶的理念。As I will literally shake my head no. 我就会，呃，摇我的头。And some people might think I have some sort of weird nervous twitch. But I, I do that because I want the action to translate into a thought. That I'm refusing to think about that. I also want the devil to see. 我要让呃哦，撒旦看到。That I don't want to think that evil thought. 就是我不想要思考这恶的事情。Now let me ask you a question. 让我问你一个问题。Practically speaking, what does it look like when the Bible says charity thinketh no evil? 实际上说，当圣当当圣经说呃爱是不计算人的恶，实际上是什么意思呢 ？We're going to take this one step deeper. It literally means. Uh, it. Uh, it. 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 The New Living Translation puts it this way. Ah, 圣经的其中一个译本，英文译本这样说。It keeps no record of being wrong. 它完全不记载别人的错误。It thinketh no evil. 它不思想罪恶的事。Have you ever been wrong before? 你有做错过事情吗 ？Do you remember when you were wrong? 你记得你做错什么吗 ？Are you keeping a record of that in your mind? 你有。The, the Bible is telling us here that when we have the character of Jesus in our lives, that we will literally not keep a record when other people wrong us. That other people's wrongs will find a grave in our hearts. I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Um, sorry. I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I think one of the most beautiful illustrations of this. Oh, I
思想都是好的。If you were to ask my mom what was Jason like as a child， 如果你问我的母亲，我以前小时候是怎么样的 ，She would tell you all of the wonderful things that I did as a kid。他会告诉你我在小时候所做的一切美好的事。How kind I was！ 我是多么的善良。How giving I was！ 我是多么的慷慨。How obedient I was！ 我是多么的顺服。And as I think back on my childhood， 可是当我在回想我的童年的时候 ，I think to myself she's thinking about the wrong kid。她应该在想着另外一个孩子。Either that or I was adopted。Is she talking about somebody else? Maybe she's talking about someone else. But I literally believe. 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 And that's what Paul is describing here. This is what Paul is describing. Jesus did not go around keeping a record of all the wrongs that other people did to him. Jesus did not go around keeping a record of all the wrongs that other people did to him. He was mistreated by many, many people. 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 Many But he had more important things to do than to remember the wrongs of others. 可是，与其记得别人的过犯，他有更重要的事情要记得。Listen to the statement from Acts of the Apostles. 呃，使徒行述。Page three hundred nineteen. 三百一十九页。Christ-like love. 基督化的爱。What kind of love? 是什么爱呢 ？Principled love. Christ-like love. 基督化的爱。Places the most favorable construction on the motives and acts of others. 对于别人的行为和动机，总加以最良好的解释。It does not needlessly expose their faults. 它并不无必要的去暴露他们的过错。It does not listen eagerly to favorable report to unfavorable reports. 它并不热衷于听不利人的传言。But seeks rather to bring to mind the good qualities of others. 却宁愿设法想到别人的优点。I want you to take a moment right now. 我想要你们啊，现在静一静，思考。And I want you to think about that person that has wronged you. 想一想那呃错误对待你的人。Maybe it's a parent. 可能是你的父母。Maybe it's a child. 可能是你的孩子。Coworker. 你的同事。Teacher, your 老师 somebody at church, 或者在你的教友 stranger on the road, 陌生人 I want you to think about that person that has wronged you. 然后你想想那一个人 that accurate record that you are keeping in your mind of the wrong that they have done. 就是你你记得他对你所犯的错 and as you think of that person, 当你想这个人的时候，在想这个人的时候 the the first thing that comes into your mind when you think about them. 那你啊，第一次想到他的时候 ，is the bad that they have done to you， 就是你想到他，他对你的坏。What I want you to do， 我要现在我要你做的是 ，I want you to think of three good things about that person。我要你想那个人的三个优点。Now you might have to pray about that one。你可能要为此而祷告。Because you have looked at that person in a negative light for so long。因为你一个负面的角度来看这个人。You, you sit here today and you say, "I can't think of anything good about them." You 坐在这里在想，我完全想不到任何的优点。And you need to pray and say, "Lord, give me the eyes of Jesus." 你就要祷告，向上帝祈求基督的眼睛。Pray and ask God, help me to see three good things about this person. 祷告并祈求上帝帮助你看到这人的三个优点。And when you think about that person, 当你在想这个人的时候。Choose to think about the good and not the bad. 选择性的去想他的优点与其他的缺点。And over time, what will happen? 当呃时间长了 ，is you will find that your attitude will change towards that person. 你对这个人的看法就会改变。And you will begin to find a list of good things about them. 你会发现他有很多的优点。Don't just stop with that one person. 不会不要再不要只停止在一个人。Chances are, ah, 很多时候 
that we have many people that have wronged us. We have this long list of bad things that have been done to us that we remember. If we're going to be honest, if we're going to be honest, it is the unsanctified heart, the unconverted heart, that finds pleasure in holding bad in our minds. I have found it amazing over the years pastoring. How brilliant people's minds can be about remembering the bad. And then I'll get up on the Sabbath morning. And encourage people to memorize scripture. And after churches, they're going out of the church. They give me one excuse after another of why they can't memorize. Yet, yet they have no problem at all. Remembering years of injustice. I think we laugh because we can identify with that. The problem is that we can't memorize. The problem isn't that we can't memorize. The problem is that we find more pleasure in remembering the bad than the good. If we would bend our mental energies around the Word of God and memorizing it, we would find that our characters will be more fit for heaven. This is in the statement from Steps to Christ, page 121. If we keep uppermost in our minds, um, woman, uh, the unkind and unjust acts of others, uh, we will find it impossible to love them as Christ has loved us. But, she goes on, if our thoughts dwell upon the wondrous love and pity of Christ for us, the same Spirit will flow out to others. You cannot love people as Jesus has loved us. If you keep in your minds the bad that they have done to you, it's, in, it's, in, it's impossible. You just can't do it. It is time for us to put to the grave the bad that other people have done. If they mistreated Jesus the way they did, how much more will they do the same thing to Jesus' followers? We should just expect this. It's going to happen. We live in a wicked world. But we can choose not to think on these things. I want to love others as Jesus did. And it was the love of Jesus that melted the hearts of the most hardened of people. Corey Ten Boom tells an interesting story. About a, 
about a man in Africa named Thomas. Thomas was a tall African man that loved Jesus and loved people. Thomas's neighbor across the dirt road. He hated God and he hated people. And so he hated Thomas. And one night, Thomas's neighbor. He he snuck across the dirt road while everybody in Thomas's house was asleep. And he set he set fire to Thomas's roof. He Thomas smelled the fire. Thomas He woke up and went outside. He beat the fire out. And he saved his home and his family. Went back to bed that night. The next night, Thomas's neighbor snuck across the road again. Everybody was asleep inside. And he set fire to Thomas's roof for the second time. Thomas came out. Beat the fire out. Saved his home and his family. Went back to sleep. Never said anything to his neighbor. Third night. There was a breeze blowing. And Thomas's neighbor across the street. Snuck across the road again. And he set fire to Thomas's roof for the third time. Thomas, Thomas came outside. And he began to beat the fire out on his roof. And as he did that, sparks began to fly up into the air. And the wind carried them across the street and they landed on his neighbor's roof. And as the wind continued to blow those sparks, Thomas's next door neighbor's roof caught on fire. Now I know what many of us would have done. We would have stood there across the street on the other side of the road and say, it serves him right. It is a judgment of God. But Thomas loved people. And after he put the fire out on his own roof, he ran, he ran across the street and put the fire out on his enemy's house as well. In the process, Thomas severely burned his hands. When the chief of the village found out, he took Thomas's neighbor and put him in prison. That night, Thomas went to one of Cory Ten Boon's meetings. After the meeting, she noticed that his hands were wrapped up from being burned. And she asked him what happened. And he very reluctantly told her the story of what happened the night before. She said to Thomas, you must be glad that this man is in prison now. 
，就是说你应该感到很很开心，因为这个人已经在监牢里了。Now you and your family are safe. 你的家人都平安无事。Thomas said this. Thomas 却这么说。He said, "I'm sorry that that man is in prison." 我感到愧疚，因为这个人。He is. He. He is an unusually gifted man. Corey said, "Well, why don't we pray for him?" Corey 就说，那我们一起为这个人祷告。And Thomas and Corey knelt down. Corey 和 Thomas 就跪下来。And Thomas lifted his bandaged hands. Thomas 把他呃受伤的手举起。And he prayed that God would perform a miracle in that man's life. And that one day, that the two of them would be able to bring the gospel to their tribe. Corey said she had never heard a prayer like that before. Corey 说她从来没有听过这样的祷告 The next day, Corey was in the same prison with that man. 昨天呃，隔天。She oftentimes would minister to the prisoners. She often to the prisoners. And that day, she made an appeal for the inmates to accept Jesus into their hearts. And Thomas's enemy in the in the back. He stood up and gave his heart to the Lord. When Corey met him after the meeting that day, she told him about the prayer that Thomas prayed the night before. How he prayed that they would become workers together to bring the gospel to their village. And this man that once was an enemy of Thomas, he said, "Yes, yes, this is how it will be." He said, "Okay, okay, we'll do this." And these two men, so these two people, who used to, well, the one that used to hate the other, they came together to bring the gospel to their village. Do you see the power that can come when we love our enemies? I look forward to getting to the kingdom of heaven and seeing the people that were one because of these two men. I believe that many more people were saved because of the two working together. Then there would have been if Thomas had just been working alone. Listen to this statement in closing. The Lord desires to call, uh, desires me to call the attention of His people to the thirteenth chapter of First Corinthians. Read this chapter every day. How often? Read this chapter every day. And and from it obtain comfort and strength. Learn from it the value that God places on a sanctified, heaven-born love. And let the lessons that it teaches come home to your heart. Learn that Christ-like love is of heavenly birth. And that without it, all other qualifications are worthless. How often do you need to read it? Let me ask you a question. If you read First Corinthians thirteen every day, do you think you would be able to memorize it? 
You wouldn't even have to put any work into it. By the time you got to the end of the week, two weeks, it would be so familiar in your mind. By the end of a month, you could probably take out a piece of paper and write it down. Read it every day. And we will learn there about the character of Jesus. Last statement, we need to wrap this up. Christ Object Lessons, page 355. Looking unto Jesus, we obtain brighter and more distinct views of God. And by beholding, we become changed. Goodness, love for our fellow man, becomes our natural instinct. What is natural instinct? It's something that happens. Do you have to force it? Do you have to think all day long, this is how I'm going to act, this is how I'm going to act, this is how I'm going to act? It just is who you are. As we look unto Jesus, we will obtain this type of experience. And 1 Corinthians 13 will not just be Jesus' experience, but it will be ours as well. I want to encourage you. Make it a habit to read this chapter every day. You can do it in three to five minutes. Once you memorize it, you can do it while you're walking out the door to go to work or school. It will give your mind something to think about. And the more we behold it, the more it will become a reality in our lives. Let's pray and ask for this experience. Father in heaven, we desire to have the character of Jesus. Lord, we want our minds that are set on things above. Not on things of this earth. We want, we want to have that natural experience. That, that, that the character of Jesus would just flow out of our hearts. And be a blessing to all who are recipients of it. Father, please perform this miracle. Please give us this heart surgery. Give us a heart that beats agape. We thank you and we praise you for what you are doing in our lives. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.